How fast could an Alcubierre warp drive theoretically go? Using a semantics argument, the answer could either be very fast or not at all. And this is because of how it functions, theoretically. It's not a propulsion system in the same way that a rocket is. It doesn't move the ship within a normal space-time reference. Instead, it manipulates space-time itself. Very basically, instead of moving the vehicle through space like a rocket, it moves space around the vehicle. The engines don't move the ship at all. The ship stays where it is, and the engines move the universe around it. From an outside observer, it would seem to speed away, but technically it's not moving at all. The end result is still a vehicle traveling from point A to point B, so it did move, just unconventionally, so don't worry too much about that. The questions are, how does it work, and how fast can it go? How it works is actually quite simple. The drive contracts space-time in front of the ship and expands it behind it. The ship resides in a zone of flat space-time known as the warp bubble. The bubble then rides this wave of space-time manipulation. This, in theory, allows a ship to travel without moving, so it bypasses the issues of time dilation and general relativity. You can travel faster than light without actually traveling faster than light. This sounds like a dumb loophole, and it is, but it's a dumb loophole we can observe and it's something that does actually happen. When we look out into the universe, we notice that all the galaxies are, by and large, moving away from us. Andromeda isn't, but it's next door, it doesn't matter. I'm talking the universe at large is moving away from us. The further away the galaxy, the faster it seems to be receding. We know this because almost all of them are redshifted. The light is being stretched into longer wavelengths. The more redshifted, the faster it's speeding away from us. And here is the problem. Very distant galaxies are so redshifted, they're actually moving away from us faster than light. In fact, we can't actually see anything beyond 16 billion light years. Ever. Like, never. Because the light will never actually be able to reach us. Why is this? Cosmic expansion. The universe is always expanding. The further away something is from you, the more space there is between you and it that's expanding. These galaxies are so far away that there is just so much space between us that the expansion itself is faster than light. So the galaxies aren't technically moving faster than light, they're just being dragged away from us faster than light because space-time is expanding faster than light, and the galaxies and us and everything are embedded in the space-time. Think stickers on a balloon. The stickers are not actually moving at all, but the balloon expands and they move apart. So, an Alcubierre drive operates differently, obviously, but this is just an example of how objects can functionally travel faster than light via space-time strangeness. The galaxies do this via cosmic expansion. The Alcubierre drive does this via a ring of negative matter or negative energy. What is negative matter? It's matter that is... negative. It would accelerate away from gravity instead of towards it. If you pushed on it, it would accelerate into the direction of the force applied. It's just very strange stuff. Is such an exotic matter real? No idea. I kind of hope it is, because the implications of negative mass open up a lot of really uncomfortable ideas relating to cosmology and time travel, and various other things that keep physicists up at night. Areas of apparent negative energy density can be created via the Casimir effect, but it's not real negative mass, or we think anyways. This is a complicated rabbit hole to fall down. Back to the warp drive. In its original form, it would need a mass energy equivalent greater than all the matter in the observable universe. Over time, changes to the warp metric were able to bring that mass energy requirement down to that of the planet Jupiter. In 2012, physicist Harold White announced confidently that changing the geometry of the exotic matter itself could bring the requirements down to a level closer to the mass of the Voyager 1 spacecraft. You know, an actually reasonable mass. Harold White has also been working on trying to test very small warp bubbles using an interferometer. Results so far have been kind of interesting, but overall inconclusive. In 2021, physicist Eric Lenz postulated an idea on how we could possibly construct a warp drive without needing exotic matter, but this is really controversial and subject to intense debate. Right then, that's all the basics, we can just move that to the side. Let's pretend we got a working one right now on our starship. 
Let's play with it and try to answer the main question. In terms of top speed, there currently isn't really a theoretical upper limit to the speed. It's speculative technology, so we have very little to go by right now aside for the math, and it looks like as long as you have the right mass energy density, you can kind of go as fast as you want. Some metrics point to 10 times the speed of light. At that speed, we could reach Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years away, in around 5 months, depending on other factors. That's actually pretty good. If the metric can further be modified to allow faster travel times, then we can go much further, much faster. Of course, there are possible negative effects of using such a drive that need to be kept in mind. The warp bubbles might allow for the formation of closed timelike curves, which facilitate backwards time travel. For more on that, see my video, Can We Actually Build Time Machines? Link below. Furthermore, there is speculation that the crew would be unable to control the warp bubble once it's turned on. Hawking radiation inside the bubble could also end up destroying everything inside, which is, you know, suboptimal. That being said, if the drive is used for slower than light travel, the destruction issue kind of goes away. Traveling at 90% the speed of light without time dilation is still pretty good, so that's something. Another potential issue, which I find the funniest, is that any starship using the drive might become an interstellar shotgun superweapon. As the ship travels at warp, the bubble could collect particles, and once the ship drops out of warp, all of that mass and energy could be released in the direction of travel like a massive directed energy blast. If you drop out of warp a few kilometers away from a space station, the space station ceases to exist in a flash of highly blue-shifted radiation. My dumb arcade game, Flank Speed, visually shows this anytime a ship drops out of warp. It also does a red-shifted burst upon entering. I just like the detail. At this time, the Alcubierre Drive is still complete speculation. We have no idea how to build one, or if we even can. Any video or video thumbnail to the contrary is lying to you to get a click. I would love for these things to be real, but I would rather live in some kind of sad reality than an ideal fantasy. However, we don't need FTL to explore interstellar space. We just need relativistic capable engines, and we have a few that just might fit the bill. I will cover these in future videos, so stay tuned.